Happy St. Patrick's Day. I see some wearing of the green here. Good morning. What a week, huh? Yesterday, President Obama presented his nomination uh, for the next Justice of the Supreme Court. Judge Merrick Garland is a widely respected jurist who embodies wisdom, judgment, and a dedication to justice for all Americans. As the Chief Justice for the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals, Judge Garland has the experience and the legal acumen to serve on the highest court in the land. He has a powerful command of the law, a deep respect for the impact on the lives uh, of the hardworking American people. Um, what we're seeing here, and, and I hope this is temporary, is a disrespect for the Constitution by the Senate Republicans. The American people expect Judge Garland, the president's nominee, to be given a fair hearing and a timely vote in the Senate. The Senate should do their job. I remind that three, uh, six justices have been confirmed in the, in the presidential year, three of them, one Kennedy, one Cardoza, one Brandeis. Today, however, the, uh, speaking of the court, uh, the House Republicans are continuing to push their ra radical anti-immigrant agenda before the Supreme Court. House Republicans have brought forward a resolution authorizing the Speaker to file an anti-immigrant amicus brief for the Supreme Court, but they won't tell the House or the American people what they are planning to say in it. Will Republicans yet again call for tearing apart families and deporting dreamers? Will they yet again suggest a religious test for prospective immigrants? Will they ask the court to explore ending birthright American citizenship? Sadly, there's not much difference between Donald Trump and House Republicans when it comes to a record of appalling anti-immigrant statements and an agenda of discrimination. Furthermore, Republicans have denied Democrats the opportunity to have a meaningful vote on our alternative uh, amicus brief in support of the President's immigration executive actions, which we filed with the court last week, 225 House and Senate Democrats. Very proud of that. It's ironic that they're filing, they're having this vote on St. Patrick's Day. Uh, last night, we had a celebration of our, the Irish American heritage. While I do not have Irish grandparents, I do have Irish grandchildren. And one of them was there at the dinner, and we talked about immigration. The rest, the Taoiseach talked about, the Prime Minister of Ireland talked about immigration when he was here at the Speaker's lunch. So, and, and what it's about is all the Irish who are here, 50,000 who are here, who can't even go home for a family funeral because the law would not allow them to come back into the country. Uh, they are not here, um, uh, shall we say, fully documented, and we need to change the law, comprehensive immigration reform. Taoiseach has asked for that over and over again. So here we are on the floor what, to ask for filing an amicus brief that is, a, not only this, we don't even know what the amicus brief is. It's yet, maybe yet to be written, but also how it's paid for. I think they said hopefully it will be pro bono. Yes. Okay, and now this week the House GOP uh, leadership presented their caucus with the latest budget proposal. We call it the road to ruin. It's a, it's a, it continues down the path that Speaker Ryan has taken us in his previous Ryan budgets. It devastates good-paying jobs, uh, lacking investment in education, the future of infrastructure in America, abandoned seniors by ending, excuse me, the Medicare guarantee, and demand $6.5 trillion, $6 trillion in cuts, the most extreme cuts ever proposed by Republicans on the Budget Committee. And yet, it's not brutal enough for their Tea Party element. It's a, it's a freeze and cut. Oh, no. It's a cut and freeze. Cut domestic agenda and then freeze it for 10 years, stultifying growth in our country. The goal of the Republican Conference is clear, to take us back to radical trickle-down economics uh, that shattered our economy and ho uh, hollowed out the wages America's working families. Democrats stand for a budget that is a statement of our values, that creates jobs, raises the paychecks of hardworking families, invest in the future of our country while reducing the deficit in a balanced and responsible way. I don't think we should leave here until we have some action. Uh, 
you know, the Republicans are fav when we were in power, famous for saying no budget, no paycheck, and oh, maybe they're a big fanfare about that, and now they can't get a budget. And we're saying at least we shouldn't adjourn until we do, and until we have uh, a statement of, of uh, a supplemental that will support our initiatives on Zika, on uh, Flint, and on uh, opioids. Uh, this, I don't know if they have any idea how every day of delay in uh, trying to control Zika by uh, investments in research and the rest, what that means in terms of public health, what that means to women of childbearing age uh, that a bite of a mosquito can just completely destroy the brain of your, of your child. In any case, um, we have work to do. We shouldn't leave until we do it. I hope that the speaker will bring a supplemental to the floor before we leave. Uh, the Senate would still have to act upon it, but at least we'd be that far, uh, that far down the road. But that, I'd be pleased to take any questions. Yes, sir. Uh, Speaker Ryan set an uh, informal deadline or goal of, of, of completing legislation on Puerto Rico by the end of this month. It looks like that's not going to happen. And I understand that, that the Democrats are in bipartisan talks on this. Can you give us a progress report on when, where these talks stand and when you think there might actually be a product here that the House will act on? The, the question is, will we have a law of the land by March 31st? Well, at this point, we will not. But we should have a, a bill uh, pretty soon. And uh, again, I think the Republicans are acting in good faith on this. I'm in communication with them. Uh, it is the bill that they will write. Uh, hopefully, uh, the c uh, advice and consent that we are giving, uh, that, and hopefully consent that we can give them uh, is... Um, predicated on uh, information that we have as to uh, how urgent this is, how timely it is for us to do something. Uh, it would be my hope that we would see something before we leave here uh, that would be marked up as soon as we come back and then taken to the floor immediately and sent to the Senate. Is Chapter 9, extending Chapter 9 uh, to the territory off the table. Actually, you would have to talk to Republicans about that. I, I, I you know, have some idea of where it's going, but I don't want to. Uh, uh, we have sort of a, until we see it, we don't know what it is. Yes. Madam, the uh, president goes to Cuba this weekend. Yes. Uh, obviously, human rights has been uh, an issue very important yes. to you. What would you like to see him uh, say and do on that score uh, during this, uh, this historic visit? Well, it, uh, it's, it's a historic visit to, to begin with. And a visit that takes place uh, in, a, uh, at the, in the last year of his presidency uh, with an important focus on the relationship between our two countries. It's no it's secret that the regime is headed by people who are, shall we say, very late in life uh, and, and not, you know, in terms of their service and leadership of that country. So while other presidents have always focused on regime change uh, in Cuba, uh, our focus will be on uh, improving the relationship between our two countries. And again, the president's focus <coughs> on uh, honoring the values of our country in terms of human rights and the ability of people to speak out without having to go to prison. We'll see what form it takes there. I was there last year. I led a delegation following the president's announcement and the excitement in Cuba over the prospect of a better relationship with the United States was palpable. It was just so exciting to be there at that time. Uh, the, uh, uh, we met with leaders of the LGBT community, people in the arts community, uh, people in the faith-based community and the rest. And um, uh, people are optimistic that uh, uh, some good news may be on the horizon. Uh, but, um, uh, you know, again, I, I don't speak for the president in the words that he will use there. You'll see that. But uh, I, I think that uh, the emphasis on human rights is something you can't deny. You know, as you know, I've been to China on this subject. And, we, again, there are overarching issues that are important in the relationship. Uh, but we lose all credibility to talk about human rights mm -hmm. anywhere if we don't talk about them in situations like this. And, and you think just his visit is enough to, to influence that human rights issues? Because, you know, certainly there are some on the right here who think he shouldn't even go because of the human rights issues in Cuba. Yeah, well, there are people here who never want to lift the embargo. You know, in other words, it is um, 
the times they are changing, and even uh, uh, other generations of people who have said that have been in my office saying we have to find another way. And so we'll see as this uh, current administration of Cu Cuban leadership uh, talks about transition, that the transition will be one uh, where human rights are respected. If the government of Cuba wants to be respected, they have to be re respect the rights of their people. Yes, sir. On Monday, Energy and Commerce had a, a roundtable on head injuries. And for the first time, an NFL official uh, conceded the link between the sport and traumatic uh, brain injuries. Wondering if you see a congressional role there, and if so, uh, what is it? Does, does, does Congress have power to, to influence this debate? It's very interesting. Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky, who has been a leader in so many uh, initiatives in the Congress, whether it's a woman's right to choose, a, a fairness in our uh, economy, she co-chairs the senior task, but you know, the list goes on and on of her accomplishments. Uh, but talk about sports, front page of the New York Times. It is, uh, it's amazing, but it's, uh, you, you've entered the popular culture, and so people are watching. And it's not just about sports. It's about our children and their participation in sports, or in my case, grandchildren and their participation in sports. It was quite remarkable uh, that the representative, high up representative of the NFL, uh, made that admission and that, uh, and that connection. Uh, so we'll see as we go forward. I think it depends on uh, a number of things. Um, uh, the actions the NFL will take, Congress will re always maintain an interest, as we did in the uh, shall we say, other aspects of whether it was baseball and any assistance some may have had in their performance, that performance drugs, and performance enhancing drugs. Uh, but certainly we will have a role, but it depends on what they do. It depends on technology in terms of what these new um, helmets can protect. And it depends on also just the idea that you shouldn't be butting heads. You shouldn't be butting heads. Maybe it changes the nature of, uh, of what is a foul on the field. But do you think the congressional role is, is just funding, is research, is, is CDC, or do you see it as, you know, OSHA governs the workplace? Well, the, again, you evaluate what the, the problem is and the uh, initiatives taken to correct it. And uh, I, I, I think when it comes to sports, especially a sport played by many children and families across America, they will want Congress to put a bright light uh, on, on this. Uh, and it uh, uh, be interesting to see where we go from here. But that committee has been very courageous, whether it's uh, Henry Waxman in terms of baseball, whether it's Henry Waxman in terms of, uh, of uh, tobacco, uh, and now, uh, uh, now uh, this, again, having an impact on f children in our country as well as the, uh, the athletes. Yes, ma'am. Thanks for your time, Ms. Leader. Um, on appropriations and budgets specifically, two-part question here. Um, what specifically do you think the House needs to complete on budget or supplementals before the recess? And have Democrats reached any conclusion on whether they lend support to help pass a deeming resolution at 1070 if the GOP can't agree on a budget. Well, let's see. Let's see. You know, in other words, we have to make a judgment about, about what what we would support when we see what it is. Uh, uh, it is my understanding that uh, Senator uh, Leader Mitchell, Mitch McConnell, has said that uh, they're going to proceed with the appropriations process, budget or not. Um, uh, that's probably what will happen in the House as well. And in terms of what has happened in the past, in terms of deeming, we just see the context of what it is. As my understanding, and again, we're talking about uh, deeming, uh, uh, assuming there isn't a Republican budget. We don't know that. It came out of committee. Some of the, uh, a couple members, uh, Republican members did not vote for it. None of the Democrats did. Uh, and uh, it's even been mentioned that at least one of the budget committee members would only vote to get it out of committee, but not on the floor. So we'll see what that is. But a budget is, uh, you know, in many countries, if you can't pass a budget, the government fought. This is a vote of confidence. And uh, I, I think it's really important for all of their chatter about how important the budget is uh, that uh, uh, and all the pride that the speaker takes in his Ryan budget uh, that it does not is not even as bad as it is and it is a road to ruin as I said it's not brutal enough uh, for the Tea Party um, 
members of his own caucus. So we'll see, but we, we will proceed one way or another to do the appropriations. And what specifically do you want to have done before we break the recess on? Well, we need a supplemental. We, we need a supplemental. We, we, we'd like to see some action uh, on a budget, but in the absence of that, we need a supplemental. We need a supplemental to deal with Zika, opioids. I would hope also to include Flint, Michigan. Uh, these are emergencies, emergencies. and. Uh, uh, in some ca cases, the speaker says he wants it paid for, as if in Flint, okay, we have a pay for. Zika, that is uh, an emergency uh, that needs to be treated as an emergency. So it, it would be really important for us to, how do we respond? How do we, what do we say to the women of America uh, that, that so much is at risk by being bitten by this insect? when we went home without doing something. And we're losing time. We're losing time right now. We have to act. And so we would like to see, at least on those three fronts, uh, a supplemental. There are other things that um, do not rise to the same level of emergency, but are timely and perhaps would be included in that. Uh, one last question, because we have to give up the room in a, a minute. Thank you. Yes. Um, what do you think of Emily's List spending millions of dollars against Chris Van Hollen, who I know you're close to in the Maryland Senate race? How do you feel about Well, I'm, I'm uh, uh, close to both of them, to Donna Edwards and Chris Van Hollen. I think they're both excellent. I boo-hoo the fact that they are leaving the House of Representatives because they're both very valued members. Emily's mis List makes their decisions. Um, and uh, we'll see how it turns out. It won't be long. What is it, April? So you know, his campaign basically says it's a waste of money because they're both such, he's pro-choice, she's pro-choice. Well, that, well, that's true. That. I, I said from a policy standpoint, it probably won't make a difference. From a standpoint of more money and more mem women in the Senate, that's th their goal. Uh, I, don't, I would hope that it's not at the cost of more women in the House when it's a, between a Democrat and a Republican who will vote pro-choice, pro-gun safety, which, is, which are some of their priors. But they're very astute uh, organization. Uh, we are uh, blessed with many members of Congress because of the work of, of Emily's List. And uh, uh, people of Maryland have an, uh, a, a great choice to make. Uh, and so I wish them well in that. But I wish that, um, that they weren't leaving the House. That's, what I, that, that's my overriding thought on the subject. Thank you all very much. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Uh, what are you doing? What are you, how about last night? Didn't score in the first four minutes, and then boom, right back with the Golden State Warriors. Do, do you, Fifty games. Here's the most important question: Are they going to surpass the Bulls' record of, 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 the best, of the best overall season? Do you think Steve Kerr has a conflict of interest, or what do you think? Well, no, I, you, but, but you, but you, as a, as a fan of the Golden State Warriors, do you think they're going to beat the Bulls' record from the midnight? That's. I, I certainly hope so. Uh, but it's interesting that Steve Kerr is, when we went to the White House, uh, I'll do this in a second, when we went to the White House <clears throat> for the championship, Golden State Warriors from last year, Steve Kerr got up there, and of course the president is a supporter, a, a fan of the Bulls. So they had their little banter back and forth. And when, he, as he introduced Steve Kerr, when Steve Kerr uh, got to the microphone, he said, Mr. President, I understand at the end of the year you'll be an independent agent. The president showed him some of his moves. And uh, I don't know what will come of that. Uh, but uh, in any event, uh, we're going all the way. We're going all the way. Isn't it remarkable? Isn't it wonderful to see? If you could ever find the channel. You don't think the Spurs are going to catch you know, they, they play a pretty good game Saturday night. Spurs and Spurs. I think that now that we've gotten so high up, you know, that is, I, I was concerned when we got to 45, tying the record, 46, surpassing the record. The Kerr's, you know, I mean, the... the, the it, they were um, like 40, and it could be we would win, and then they would surpass us. But now we're so far out. We're so far out. Any pangs of divided loyalty if Maryland plays California in the you know, second round? Of the well, you know, I, I, I love both the teams. I root for the Terps. Of course, I root for California. But I, I, I revisit when I was rooting for the 49ers. Uh, to, to win their division and this and rooting for Baltimore, the Ravens, to win it. And then they ended up together uh, um, at the Super Bowl. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I didn't mean all in one year. Anyway, thank you all. Happy Thanksgiving.